2019, question 10, part A. Work out the circumference of a circle with a diameter of 8 centimetres. Give your answer correct to one decimal place. So on the formula sheet, what's the formula for the circumference of a circle? 2 pi r. 2 pi r. Okay. The length of a circle is the perimeter or the circumference. So the circumference is 2 pi r. Now, in this question, we weren't told what the radius was. What were we told? If you know the diameter, how do you get the radius? Divide by 2. So the diameter is 8. What's the radius? 4. So the circumference is going to be 2 pi r. So this means the circumference is going to be 2, by, two pi by 4. Now, that is 8 pi, but you can't leave your answer in terms of pi unless it specifies that in the question. Here, you're told to give your answer correct to one decimal place. So if you type in 2 pi bracket by 4, close the bracket, what is that answer correct to one decimal place? 25.1 centimetres. Okay, so that is the circumference of a circle with diameter 8. And then we're told the rubber track for a toy digger goes around four circular wheels of diameter 8 centimetres as shown. So you can see here we've got this toy and we've got this uh, rubber track which goes around the outer surface. Inside this we've got four circles. Okay. Now we are told this is the diameter of 8. So in part B then, we want to calculate the length of the rubber track that goes around the four wheels. Give your answer correct to one decimal place. Now, this here is half a circle, this rubber part here. And this rubber part here is another half a circle. What does them two half circles add to? A full circle. Now, we've already found out, what was the length of a full circle? 25.1. Okay. What we now need to find is this length. Now, if you know this length here, what's this length up here? The same. same. Now, what's the distance from the centre of this circle to the centre of this circle? Eight. 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 What about the distance from the centre of this circle to this one? Eight. And the distance between this centre and this one? Eight. Eight. So, what's the distance between the first centre and the last centre? If you count them, there's one, two... two. Three, do you see that? There's only three of them, isn't there? Three lengths. So that's eight, that's another eight, and that's another eight. So that would be 24, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, if that's 24, what's this length here? So from here to here, that would be 24 also. So the amount of rubber that's used is this base length is 24, this, this height up here is 24. And what about these two semicircular ends? What do they both add to? 25.1. That's what we've done in part A. So the length of the rubber is 24 plus 24 plus 25.1. And what happens when you add these three lengths up? What do they add up to? 23.1 centimetres. Okay, so that's the length of rubber that's used all together. Okay, so if you were to cut this track and line it out, it would be 73.1 centimetres in length. Okay. Now, then it states every time the wheel turns fully, the digger travels a distance equal to one wheel's circumference. Work out how many times each wheel will fully uh, turn when the digger travels a distance equal to the length of its rubber track. Now, what was the length of the rubber track? 73.1. We want to know how many times each wheel turns. 
So the number of turns is going to be the length of the rubber. And what was the length of the rubber? Over the length of one of the circles. What's the length of one of the circles? 25.1. So we want to know how many times the circle go around to cover a total distance of uh, 73.1. So the number of turns is going to be the length of the rubber track divided by the circumference. So what is the length of the rubber track? Over, what was the circumference? 25.1. So if we divide 73.1 by 25.1, this will tell us the number of turns that's required. Now, what's the answer to one decimal place? 2.9. But what does the question state specifically? Full turns. How many full turns will each wheel do? Yeah, it's two, isn't it? So this is one of them cases where you have to round down. Is that okay? It'll do 2.9 turns. But you can't have, it, we want to know how many full turns there are. Is that okay? So will it do three full turns? No. Even if the answer had been 2.99999, how many full turns does it do? Two. So the number of full turns here would just be two. Is everyone okay with that? Why is two? Okay. Question 13 then, which come up in 2018. So when she's in holidays, Barbara sees the building shown on the right. She wants to estimate the surface area of one of the spheres in the building. She estimates that the radius of the sphere is 9. Using Barbara's estimate for the radius, work out her estimate of the surface area of the sphere. Give your answer in metres squared in terms of pi. So it's unusual for them to allow you to leave your answer in terms of pi. That's easier for you. And okay, so we're going to leave the answer in terms of pi. Now, from your formula sheet, what's the surface area for a sphere? 4 pi r squared. 4 pi r squared. So the surface area for a sphere is 4 pi r squared. What number are we putting in for r? Nine. Is that okay? So do be careful. Sometimes it gives diameter, sometimes it gives radius. Here it's given the radius, so we just put in the number nine. So it's going to be four pi by nine squared. And we are going to leave the answer in terms of pi. And what is that answer in terms of pi? So if you put four pi bracket nine squared into your calculator. It's 324 pi. Okay, so we've left the answer in terms of pi only because the question told us to do so. Otherwise, you would have to work out the decimal equivalent. Now, the next part then states, though, that the actual radius of the sphere is somewhere in between 8 meters and 10 meters inclusive. We have to work out the maximum value of the percentage error in Barbara's estimate of the surface area of this sphere. I dot E, the error as a percentage of the actual surface area. Give your answer correct to the nearest percent. So the estimate was 9. The actual could be anywhere between 8 and 10. We have to work out the maximum possible percentage error. So the maximum error would occur if the actual radius was either 8 or 10. Now, we're not sure which of them is going to give the maximum percentage error. So we have to work out both of these separately. So if the actual radius was 8, we're going to work out what the surface area um, would be in that case. What's the formula for the surface area of the sphere? 4 pi r squared. Okay, so if the actual radius was 8, this is going to give us the actual surface area. So this is going to be 4 pi by 8 squared. 
And that works out as 256 pi. Now, that's the actual. We have to work out now the percentage error. The percentage error is the error over the exact multiplied by 100. What did Barbara estimate the radius to be? Oh, the, uh, the radius was estimate 9 and the, the surface area was estimated as 324. So what's the difference between these two? Um, you always use a plus here. Is that okay? So it's, it, it's, it's always the bigger number minus the smaller number. Is that okay? Just to get a plus value. So the difference between these two numbers is 68 pi. So that's the error. Which of the two answers was the exact? The 256 pi. Okay. So if the actual radius was 8, the exact surface area is 256 pi. So the percentage error is the error over the exact multiplied by 100. So we said the error was 68 pi. 324 minus 256 pi is 68 pi. So this means the percentage error is going to be 68 pi over 256 pi multiplied by 100. Now, what would happen to pi's here? They cancel out. So if you just ignore the pi's, now if you put them in your calculator, your calculator will get rid of them anyway. So it makes no difference really. So if you type that into your calculator with or without the pies, we want to work out what the percentage error is to the nearest percent. So if you put in 68 over 256 by 100, if you put in the pie, it makes no difference, and you give it the exact same answer. What's this to the nearest percent? 27%, is it? 27%. So this gives a percentage error of 27%. But we're not sure if that's the maximum percentage error. What's the other possible radius? The radius could have been 10 either. That could have been the exact value. So we have to do the exact same thing again, except this time we're going to use a radius equals 10. Just to see which of them gives the bigger percentage error. So if R equals 10, the surface area is going to be 4 pi by 10 squared. So here, the surface area is going to be 4 pi by 10 squared, and that works out as 400 pi. Now, if this is now the exact surface area, what would the error be? Or how do you calculate the error? That's the percentage, but what, what's the error? Subtract. So it's always the bigger number minus the smaller number. So we're going to have 400 pi minus, what was the estimate? 324 pi. And why don't you take these away? That gives 76 pi. So the percentage error is going to be the error over the exact multiplied by 100. The error is... 76 and the exact is 400 so 76 pi over 400 multiplied by 100 now the pies will cancel and that works out as well 19 pi so the question stated what's the maximum possible percentage error so which of the two worked out as the maximum possible percentage error? The 27%. So the maximum possible percentage error could have been a 20% error, 27% error. Okay, next of all then, this is question 3 in 
So we're told that Kerry has some small ball bearings. Each one of these is in the shape of a sphere of radius 6 millimetres. We have to find the volume of one of these ball bearings. So you're going to look at your formula sheet. And what's the volume of a sphere? Volume of a sphere is? Or? Cubed. The volume of a sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. What number will we put in for r? 6. So this is 4 over 3 pi by 6 cubed. Now again, it actually does specify, give your answer in terms of pi. Is that okay? It's only when it states that, that you can leave your answer in terms of pi. Otherwise, you have to give the decimal number equivalent. So what does this work out as in terms of pi? 288 pi. And the answer here is in millimeters cubed. Then we're told that Kerry is going to melt down some of her ball bearings. Now she will use the material to make a sphere of radius 25 millimetres. We want to know the least number of ball bearings she must melt down so that she's enough material to make a sphere of radius 25 millimetres. So we know the volume of one ball bearing. What we're going to do now is work out the volume of this larger sphere. And then we we'll try and figure out how many of the smaller ball bearings we need. What's the radius of this bigger sphere? 25. So we're going to work out the volume of this larger sphere. So again, we're just going to use the volume is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So this is going to be 4 over 3 pi times, what's the radius? 25 to be cubed. Now, because we left part A in terms of pi, we're going to leave this in terms of pi as well. Okay. Now, you didn't have to, but it probably would just be a little bit easier. What does this work out as in terms of pi? Oh, comes out as a decimal, does it? Yeah. Now, you could leave it as a decimal. And another way of doing this is, if you want to leave it in terms of pi, when you're doing your calculation, don't put pi into a calculator. Is that okay? Just put in 4 over 3 by 25 cubed. And that will give you the number that you put in front of pi. Okay? So if you put 4 over 3 by 25 cubed, this works out as 62,500 over 3. Is that okay? And then you can just attach a pi to the answer. But it is perfectly okay to write down the decimal number. Is that okay? It'll make no difference. Okay. So you could write the answer as 62,500 over 3 times pi, or whatever that number your calculator gave you. Either way, it's going to give you the exact same answer. Now, this is the volume of the larger. Yep. Yeah, is that, is that you put in pi into a calculator, did you? No. So did you put in 4 over 3 bracket 25 to the power of 3? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But it is okay to use the number that your calculator give you. Is that okay? So it, it makes no difference. Now, that's the volume of the larger sphere. We want to know how many of the smaller ball, ball bearings we need. How would you work out the number of ball bearings we're going to need? What do you do to your answers? Minus them would just give you the difference. Divide. You're going to divide this bigger number by the smaller number. So if we divide the 62,500 over 3 pi 
Find the answer we got in part A, which was 288 pi. Okay, this will tell us the number of ball bearings. So what would happen to pi here? You cancel out. Okay. So you could just type in 62500 over 3 all over 288. So you've got a fraction and then you've got a fraction again. So how many spheres does she need? So now how many spheres would how many of the smaller spheres would she need exactly then? Seventy. Seventy? You'd need seventy four, wouldn't you? Would you have enough in seventy three? No. No. So you're gonna need uh, what was the answer? Seventy two? Two, yeah. two point three. Yeah, so it's seventy two point three, that means you need how many spheres are you going to make it? Yeah, you, you have to round up here. Why would you have to round up in this case? Because you won't have enough. You won't have enough. Okay. So you, you'd have to round up here in this case. You'd need to have 73 of these smaller spheres to make that larger sphere. Even if that had it worked out as 72.00001, what, what would you need? 73. 73. Okay, so sometimes you have to round up, other times you have to round down. Okay, and then we're told Kerry has 350. Yeah. What answer did you get? Okay. Okay, so the last part then. Now we're told that Kerry altogether has 350 of these small ball bearings. We're now going to work out the radius of the biggest sphere she could make. Okay, so what was the volume of one of the spheres? The, uh, sorry, one of the small ball bearings. If you multiply that by 350, that's going to give you the total volume. And okay. So she's got 350 of these all together. So the total volume is going to be 350 by 288 pi. And what does that work out as? 100800 zero, 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 pi. Is that okay? So that's the total volume. Now we want to melt these down and make what type of a shape? Another sphere, isn't it? Okay. And uh, what's the volume for a sphere formula? Four over three pi r cubed. Now, in this question, we actually know what the left hand side is. Well, we what's the unknown in this equation? The radius. Or is what we're looking to find. So what are we going to put in the left hand side? V. One zero zero eight zero zero pi. Okay, because we know what the volume is. We're trying to find out what R is. Now, what's common to both sides here? What'll happen? They just cancel. So the pi's will just cancel. Now we're trying to get R on its own. We're going to first of all get R cubed. On the right hand side, what's this tree doing in this side? Dividing. Dividing. When you bring that across, it would multiply. So if you get 100800 by 3, that gives 302400. 
Next of all, this 4 is multiplying. What happens to bring it over? Divides. So 302400. If we divide that by 4, what's that? Seventy five thousand six hundred. Now seventy five thousand six hundred is what R cubed is. If you want to get R, what do you have to do? Not not square root, nearly right? Cubed root. Is that okay? Do you know how to get the cube root in your calculator? So if you get the cubed root of seventy five thousand six hundred, what is that? Cubed root of seventy five thousand six hundred. Now we want the answer correct to the nearest millimeter. Forty two. So R is the cubed root of seventy five thousand six hundred. Does everyone know how to do that? Anyone having trouble with that? Okay, get the cube root of a number, and that works out then as forty two millimeters. The answer was 73. Okay, because it says, what's the smallest, what's the least number of ball bearings she'd need to make a larger sphere? If she had two, 72 of these smaller ball bearings and melted them down, she wouldn't have had enough to make the bigger sphere. Is that okay? Because it would have to make the same 72.2. Yes, so if it's 72.2, if you use 72 spheres, oh. would you make the bigger sphere? It was well, just slightly too small, wasn't it? Is that okay? Yeah. So sometimes you always have to round up, no matter what answer you get. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. The next question then, this is just on area. So we're told in this question, all the lengths are in centimetres and the area is in centimetres squared. So the diagram shows a rectangle with sides of length 7 and y. The value of the area of the rectangle is equal to the length of its perimeter. Use this information to try and find a value of y. Now, how do you get the perimeter of any shape? add up all the sides so you can see if this here length is seven what's this length seven, seven. if this width is y what's this seven. y so if we add them up what are they going to add to seven and seven is two. y and y two. two y so you're going to have two y plus 14. so here the perimeter we've got two lengths and two widths that's going to be two by seven plus 2 by y, and that's just 14 plus 2y. Is that okay? 14 plus 2y. So that's the perimeter. What's the formula for the area of a rectangle? Length times width. So what are you multiplying together? 7 by y. So the area is length by width, and that's 7y. Now, we were told that there was a relationship between the area and the perimeter. What were we told about them? It said in the question. They equal each other. See that? So we were told that they actually equal each other. So that means that 14 plus 2y equals 7y. Is that okay? So that's just for this particular rectangle. That's not all rectangles. So we were told that the perimeter equaled the area. That means the 14 plus 2y equals 7y. Now if you bring that plus 2y over, what does it become? Yeah. And what's 7y take away 2y? 5y. 5y. Now if we want to get y on its own, what's that number 5 doing to the y on the right? Multiplying. What happens you bring it over? Divides. What's 14 divided by 5? 
3.8. So y equals 3.8. So we found the value for y. Okay, next of all, in part B then, the diagram shows a rectangle with sides of length x and y, and x is some number bigger than 2. The value of the area of the rectangle is equal to the length of the perimeter. Same idea again, so we're going to do the same thing again. Use this information to write y in terms of x. So we're going to do exactly what we've done already. So for this rectangle, the perimeter is the sum of all four sides. So if this is x, what's this? If this is y, what's this? Y. So the perimeter is going to be 2x's plus 2y's. So here the perimeter is 2l plus 2 widths. So this is going to be 2 times x plus 2 times y. And that is just 2x plus 2y. So we can just write that as 2x plus 2y. What's the formula for the area? Area of a rectangle? Length by width. So this is just going to be x by y. This would just be x by y. Now, we were also told the same thing applied for this rectangle. What are you told about the area and the perimeter? They were same. So that means xy equals 2x plus 2y. So 2x plus 2y equals xy. Now, what it states is use this information to write y in terms of x. That means we want to get the y's on one side and everything else on the other. We're trying to get y on its own. So you can see here, if we bring this plus 2y over the other side, if that's a plus 2y on this side, when you bring it over, it becomes mm. minus 2y. Now, the reason why I've done that is because we're trying to get y on its own. So we've all the y's together. Now, on the right-hand side, what do we have common to both of these terms? y. So if we factorize out a y, what are you left with? x minus 2, if you take out the y, isn't it? If I take out this y and this y, you're left with x minus 2. So on the right-hand side, if we factorize out the y, you're left with x minus 2. Now, if you want to get y in its own, what's that x minus 2 doing to the y on the right? I want to bring it over to the other side. If it's multiplying on one side, it divides on the other side. So we're going to have 2x all over what? x minus 2. See the way it's multiplying? So if this is multiplying, you bring it over and you do the opposite. So it divides. So y in its own is going to be 2x all over x minus 2. Okay, that was very tricky, that question. Yep. Um, see the way it says here, x is greater than 2? That was put in there because of this. You see the way we've got x take away 2? What happens if x was smaller than 2? Give me a number that's smaller than 2. What's 1 take away 2? Minus 1. That's minus 1 by y, which would be a minus y. That would mean you get negative lengths. Can you have a negative length? Is that okay? So that was just put in there. So this only works if your x value is bigger than 2. If x is smaller than 2, you end up getting negative lengths, okay? Which is impossible, okay? Okay, the next question. In question 12, part A. We've, we're told that a packet of sweets is in the shape of a closed triangular base prism. It has got a height of 8 centimetres and a triangular base 
with sides of length 4 centimeters, 4 centimeters, and 6 centimeters. Construct an accurate net of the prism. Show all of your construction lines clearly. Now, if you were to open this out, what would the base look like? What shape? It would be a rectangle. And what about the two sides for, on the top? They're both rectangles. What about the front and the back? They're both triangles. Okay. So this is what the net would look like if you opened it out. Now, you do have to put in um, these measurements as well. Okay. So the base is going to be a rectangle. What would the dimensions be for the rectangular base? 8 by 6. 8 by 6. Okay. So the, the roof part. What would the dimensions be for each of these rectangles? Four by four by eight. They'd both be four by eight, wouldn't it? You can only see one side, can't you? But the other side is going to be four by eight as well. Okay. So if we were to open this out, this is what this shape would look like. Okay. So you can see here the eight by six. What does this here represent? The base. And then we've got these two sides which fold over to give it sort of like a roof effect, isn't it? So that's 8 by 4, and this one here is also 8 by 4. And then we've got these two triangular ends. That's 4, that's 4, that would be 6. That's 6, that would be 4, and that would be 4. Okay, so that's called the net. Is that okay? So that's what happens when you open it out. So when you open this out, you're going to have three rectangles and two triangles. Okay. So you have to draw that in, showing them measurements. Okay. 